It's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. Tonight, we're back to drinking one of my beers. It's like <laughs> one every 30 beers is my beer. So tonight, we're, we're drinking for the season. We've got ourselves a stout in front of us. Um, I don't really know of the many categories of stout exactly where this falls, but I will tell you, this is a project, oh. stout, where I've been oh, working boy. on developing what I'm calling a house stout. Uh, so house stout. Stout that I want to have on that's easy to drink, and um, we'll get to that later. But um, I, I've got in my mind this, what a perfect stout recipe is, and mm. we're going to go through it. So while John continues to taste, let me give you the rundown on this beer, okay? This is five pounds of Maris Otter, five pounds of pale malt. It's a pound of English chocolate, which is a dark chocolate 450 love, a pound of English roasted barley, a pound of uh, Bryce Caramel 60, mm. one and a half pounds of flaked oats, two ounces of East Kent Goldings at 60 minutes, one ounce at 15, one ounce at zero. Okay. And this baby was fermented with two packs of Nottingham. Uh, the starting gravity on this was 1065. The finishing gravity on this was 1014 for an ABV around 6%, 6.5%. Yeah, nice. yeah. And um, the water treatment was just calcium chloride, 2.5 grams in the mash, not in the big, I didn't scale this up to the big 12 gallons like I've been talking about in the past. Camden tablet to treat the water, then 2.5 grams of calcium chloride um, in the mash. Not in the mash, but in the mash water before the grain goes in to make sure it's dissolved. Just to be clear. Mm. We get a lot of questions about Crystal clear. Operationally, no, when those salts I, hit the, hit the magic, that. right? And I appreciate that and I appreciate you answering the questions. So there you go. This is nice. Um, it's uh, it's funny, like I think we've made some uh, stouts with the pale chocolate uh, in the past and that really has a um, stronger chocolate flavor. This think so, is, yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, has nice roasty, I wouldn't, yeah. maybe like some, a little uh, cacao nib flavors there but like not not like super chocolate it's a it's, it's a nice roasty beer um with like a nice dry finish the ekg comes out um a little bit in the aftertaste uh, a little bit of um some of that herbally uh english thing going on well i'm sorry i missed the yeast uh nottingham person. nottingham it was the first time i ever thrown nottingham into mm. um one of my stouts uh, because I had it, and yeah. I wanted to do two packs at the time, um, just because I wanted to ferment it quickly and get through it. But I sort of like the fermentation profile on this. Yeah, it's actually relatively clean. Um, you know, I think it's something a little bit more expressive. Um, sometimes I feel like if you get a little bit too much ester in a beer that's got so much roast malt, mm. that the roast malt starts to taste sweeter than it is, and then you start thinking, "Oh, this this beer is sweet." It just sort of starts getting a little cloying per se. Yep. Or actually, I think sometimes that ester with the roasted malt also seems, makes it taste a little more acidic than what you th what it probably really is, right? Yeah. The one thing that scared me when I put this together <laughs> was that because I, I was somewhat using stuff up I and mean, I sort of planned the, the amounts this way. I wanted to go big with the flavors. My, just pay, my, my, my goal here is to now take this, dial it back to about a 5% yeah. ABV stuff. Yeah, okay. Because this is not what I would consider a house. A house stout <laughs> yet, right? This is, I think this is great. Yeah. And I would probably sit and drink a couple of these, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to have a stout that I feel like I can drink and not think about alcohol, think about whatever, you know? Yep. Um, but by putting in a whole pound of English chocolate, a whole pound of roasted barley, I think that's what um, there's yeah. a tremendous amount of roast, roast there. It is, <laughs> it's, it's completely yeah. jet black. I love that. Um, Tan, but it's a little yeah, bit strong. Yeah. Maybe, I think yeah. maybe if I dial those back to three quarters of a pound each, just to lighten the the massive expressiveness yeah. of it. Um, I think that'd be good. I was also a little bit worried about going with a whole pound of Caramel 60. Um, but I don't think it's very caramel at all. I think it's I think it's actually smoothing out mm. the roast edges, the roast, yeah, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, because to me in a stout, that's what caramel malt does for you. It helps you smooth out smooth some of the rougher parts of, of, yeah. of dark roasted malt. The acrid malts. taste yeah. that you say. Um, Okay, so for the viewers at home, you say you want to bring that um, the uh, alcohol volume down. Yep. What's so I know that you know you're probably going to break you're, you're going to bring back some of those more flavorful character malts that you talked about. Yep. And grains. So what are you going to do? Are you just going to bring down the base malt too? I'll probably just bring down the pale malt. Leave the Maris Auto where it is in order to maintain 
um, not that you can really pull it out of here, mm. but whatever Maris biscuit-like quality there is. And yeah. I think maybe if I mute the other specialty grains, that Maris will stick out a little bit. But I'd rather just take some of the alcohol out yeah. by coming down maybe a pound and a half or two pounds on the, the pale malt. It's funny, I can, I can sense the, uh, <laughs> the gravity of it. You know, yeah. It's funny, yeah, because it's, I think some of the other stouts that uh, we've brewed in the, in the past few mm -hmm. years, we've stuck around like, you know, that typical lower gravity stout. So this I can, yep. I can sense has, yeah. it's not, you know, that imperial like, oh, this is a warming Well, alcohol. yeah, well, compare that to the 10.5% yeah. kitchen sink stout yep. um, right. that I have. Yeah. Um, that one definitely is a little bit stronger and the flavor profile is a lot more, a little bit more dynamic. Mm. I was gonna say wacky because it is kind of wacky. Um, but it drinks, it drinks well yeah. in like four ounce pours. This is, I. Definitely serviceable in a 16 ounce pour. And so my last question for you, if you're house stout, yes. will you stick with the Nottingham strain? I'm kind of digging it. Yeah. I'm kind of digging it. But I will say this. This is what the real plan is with the yeast. I'm, I'm sort of playing with the yeast a little bit here. Um, on my recipe sheet, this is called house stout number two, but I've been screwing around with a house stout idea for many stouts, <laughs> so I don't know really what I call this too. Maybe last time I brewed, I was just trying to dedicate myself to the project. So. Um, but I think for the yeast thing, I think once I get the alcohol where I want and I understand what type of roasted malts I want, mm. then what I'll probably do is brew this at say uh, an eight gallon level and then put it into, I've got four like three gallon fermenters. So I'll do some two gallon ferments, I'll four two gallon ferments and then pitch my four favorite yeast and see which one sings to me the most. Well, let's Nottingham see. is definitely on the list yeah. now. Um, 04 and would be on the list. 04, because that's just something I've always used. Yep. I used to make a great oatmeal style with 04. Yep. Yep. And then, um, I don't know, probably the, the ESB yeast, mm. seven, is that 7028 or 12? Um, I don't know. The Y yeast, yeah. ESB yeast. Yep. And then, I don't know, oh, oh, probably White Labs 007, the dry English ale. There you go. Because I've used that one a lot in the past. And you too. like that too? Yeah. Cool. Um, if none of them really sing to me, then we'll go back to the drawing board and maybe we'll try. Um, West Yorkshire and a couple of other ones that I've played with in the past, but never really, really focused. So I think with yeast, you want to do side by sides. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. I, I think you have I to. I think yeah. So. And that's something that we've we've talked about. And that's what for we'll the do. channel. Then maybe in the new year. That's where maybe this maybe start will... in this new 2020 kind of decade thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, so there we go. Great. Thank you. This is a great project. I think that house styles. I think that's something that all home brewers kind of. Um, aspire to to have their list of house. These are the these are the styles that I brew for the house, and this is my version of it. So come on over and taste it. Yeah, I want to. You want to have a beer that that sort of at least some home brewers. I'm one of them. I want to have a beer or two that I'm known for. Mm. That when people are coming over, and this is that time of year, mm. people are coming over. They're coming over thinking, oh, I hope we get to have some house stout. I hope we've got house stout. Right? It's sad that people avoid you in the summertime. I know it is. That's awful. It's because I have house stout in the summer, too, and they're like, oh, my gosh, we can't go over I'll, there. I'll see you in December. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for this. I think that uh, it's great to have projects, great to have house styles. Tell us about your house styles in the comments below. Um, I think that a cream ale with Liberty Hops is another Bing. house style for you. Um, but I'd love to hear more about uh, the house styles out there in the interwebs. Uh, if you like this, Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel because we do this every week. For John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.